you know, I've always said that what psychedelics do, and to some degree all drugs, but psychedelics are the most dramatic, is they dissolve boundaries. Well, cultures and governments are totally, and they sell boundaries. Boundary consciousness is what they're all about. Our class, our group, our fatherland, motherland, our Borgian lineage, our noble race. This is all the rhetoric of nationalism. And, uh, and so governments, whether a socialist state, an industrial democracy, a theocratic state, they can all get together on one proposition. The drugs are just terrible, terrible things because they erode loyalty to the myth, the, the societal myth. That's one reason, a pretty abstract social engineering reason. And the other reason is, for at least the past 500 years, drugs, by different names, but drugs have been the one of the largest money earners ever brought into the marketplace. Uh, where is the CIA going to get a quick billion dollars or two off budget if they have a sudden need to topple an unfriendly Middle Eastern government? It, well, it's called taking a flyer on drugs. Uh, it's very clear that in the 60s, uh, China white heroin was used as a, as a social engineering drug in the American ghettos. Because every time you let in a lot of heroin, the political rhetoric in the ghetto fell to a murmur. It was, it was directly related to how loaded people were on these completely dulling, sedative drugs. Well, then when the geopolitical game slipped from the control of the U.S. in one area of the world and we were run into the ocean in Vietnam, suddenly the world heroin supply was in the hands of the imams in, in Iran, and the brown tar Iranian heroin uh, became a drag on the market, and suddenly cocaine became the chic drug in the American ghetto. And that was because the CIA could just open certain taps and close other taps and bring uh, this stuff in, and it made them a lot of money. I can remember, you know, there was a period uh, in the in the mid '70s to mid '80s where hashish just basically disappeared from the underground market. It was unknown uh, in quantity, and then when the mujahideen began to struggle against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan, suddenly you could get uh, hundred kilo lots of hash un unbroken from how it's sold in the markets in Peshawar. So you could see it had not been concealed in any ordinary method. No, it had been drawn up to Pier 9 in San Francisco and unloaded with forklift trucks because the CIA wanted the Mujahideen to have a bank account so they could pay for weaponry. And they knew that hash wasn't a problem anyway.